Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to BWTM Sports Live. This is part of a two-part feature. First up tonight, we'll be having the big-hitting Darnell Boone. And straight afterwards, we'll be talking. Good morning, good afternoon. Nice always hear your voice in the background. We'll be talking to trainer of Gennady Golovkin, Abel Sanchez, live in a very special uh, question and answer session. Without further ado, let's bring my man into the room, Mr. Darnell Boone. Darnell, how you doing, brother? Oh, man, doing. How you doing, brother? How are things? Oh, man, everything is all Jesus, bro. Just, just cooling out, training, getting ready for my fight. Okay, for those people who don't know who Darnell Boone is, just very quickly give us uh, the weight division you're in and your record. I'm, fight, I'm fighting in two weight divisions. I fight at 68 and at 75. Okay. And uh, I'm 24 and 24. Don't look at that record, though, because it's real deceiving. It is very deceiving. Uh I won't blow your own trumpet. I'll, I'll, I'll blow your trumpet. You don't have to blow your own trumpet. Uh, Darnell Boone is a man that has had... He currently has a knockout victory over uh, Adonis Stevenson. He also has knocked down Andre Ward and knocked down Sergey Kovalev. So some great uh, achievements there, um, Darnell. Darnell, What's that? I see you got some gra some great achievements there. Knocking down, uh, knocking out Adonis yeah, Stevenson, man. knocking down Andre Ward, knocking down Sergey Kovalev. Some great achievements there. Accomplishment for me, you know, given that you know I didn't I didn't start boxing since I was a young buck like everybody else, you know what I mean. So everything that come to me, you know, up this ladder, you know what I'm saying. I'll, I'll take it all as you know what I'm saying, accomplishment. So for people who don't quite know your story, you said you talked about your record. Can you explain why your record is the way that it is? Well, I guess because I, I can fight a little bit, you know, from the beginning. You know, you would think, you know, what I'm saying after the war fight, they would that I will get slowed down. And, um, but, you know, they're just throwing me out there, you know, cause I can fight a little bit, but you know, I can fight and I, you know, I, and with myself, you know, I got confidence in myself. So if my, if my trainer or whoever gonna give me the fight say, I think you can beat this guy, you know, let's go fight him, see what we can do. You know what I mean? So you just took the fights regardless. You were, there was no real managerial structure. It was just go and take the fight. So give us some situations of what happened. So some of the sort of things you've had to deal with in your career that would have caused you to have had a loss, for example. Well, most times it's just uh, short notice, getting called short notice. Um, never really getting, being at my full potential to go in there. No. But, you know, it's a big thing to me because even with me not being at my full, you know, yeah. I'm still either going the distance or knocking out guys that I shouldn't be in there with. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, when you talk about uh, short notice, when you talk about short notice, give us examples of the kind of short notice you were giving and who you were fighting at the time. Anything, anything between five days and two weeks. <laughs> okay, and the kind of opponents you'd have to be facing? The kind of opponents you'd have to be facing? I fought uh, Andre Ward on a uh, week's notice. I fought Kovalev the first time, training myself for two weeks. I fought uh, Donna Stevenson, my, um, training uh, myself Darnell, for two weeks. Darnell, sorry, I can't hear you clearly because there's someone else talking in the background. I say uh, I fought Andre Ward on a week's notice. I fought Curtis Stevens on a uh, five days' notice. I fought... Um, Kovalev, two weeks training myself, the first fight, and the second fight, um, I did probably like two weeks too, maybe three. 
So t- Adonis Stevenson, the first time I fought him, two weeks notice, training myself. Wait, so so when you fought Andre Ward, you knocked Andre Andre Ward down in that fight, correct? Right. And then the Sergey Kovalev fight, which is the first fight there, they never show. You knocked him down numerous occasions. Exactly. Why is that fight never shown on YouTube? It was three times. Could have been four. Um, but they, they only ruled one of the knockdowns. Okay. And okay. They, they, gave, they, kept, they kept it close and gave it to him, gave it to him on a, um, the split decision. But clearly I had won that fight. So, I mean, with two weeks to prepare for a fight, I mean, that, that doesn't give you any room to kind of show your full potential. No, nah, I really, just going in there just fighting off an of instinct. I ain't even, two weeks, I ain't even really in good shape. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my own strength conditioning. I'm doing my own bag work. I'm doing, I'm doing everything on myself. So, you know what I mean? You know, when somebody ain't, you know, on, over your back like that, you know, you kind of just lollygagging because you ain't got nobody to push you. So what about the whole once bitten, twice shy? I mean, it happened to you once, then it happened to you again. Did you not think to yourself, well, look, you know what? I am going to refuse these fights because it's not doing me any favors. I need some more time. Well, no, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, you know, I, I get antsy and I be sitting so long. Then I'll be training, you know what I mean? Then, you know, the fight pop up, I'll be wanting to fight. So, I, so I, you know, when I took when I took the five the five losses in a row, or the four or five losses in a row, uh, those ones was, you know, because I was just getting home, I was trying to get that money back fast. Right. You know what um, I mean? So yeah. I was just getting out of the, uh, coming out of jail. So I was trying to get back that money fast. So I took them fights, you know what I mean? But the guys that I was with, they really didn't know what they was doing either. Okay. Uh, in terms of the Adonis Stevenson match, you won one, he's won one. Is there ever a possibility you could even push for a rubber match? I definitely won a rubber match. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, I, w- I want to fight him away from Canada. Okay. And what do you think the chances of that happening are? Probably slim to none. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, he, ain't been, he ain't been out of Canada since I knocked him out. That's <laughs> <laughs> only being real, man. He ain't, he ain't came over that state line since. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about some fights that have happened. Um, but first of all, let's talk about your career before we go on to fights that have happened. It's been a while since I last spoke to you. Let's talk about the fight you recently had. Oh man, it was a good fight. Um, actually, I, I fought heavy. Um, I, I weighed in at one one eighty. I probably went in the ring like eighty five, one ninety. But the guy was huge. He was like he was like two plus. I want to say like two fifty, two sixty, something like that. He was huge. What happened? But I ended up stop. I ended up stopping him the first round though. What the hell? What the hell are you doing fighting a guy that big? Well, I needed his record. You know what I mean? He was he was like fourteen and six, fifteen and five, something like that. Yeah. And um, I kind of just took my time. But it looked, the first shot I even hit him with that was hard. The look on his face was like, "Man, forget this. Give me my check. We going home." <laughs> so I went. I went on. I went on ahead and ended that. You know what I mean? So we go home early. <laughs> <laughs> so now you told me. I know you told me off air that you've got another fight coming up in two weeks in Mexico. Yeah. How how does that I work out? Who are you fighting? Uh, I'll find out probably like in another week or so. Okay. Um, they, they, they look at line, actually like lining them up. You know what I mean? Okay. But why Mexico? Not why not in America? Well, you know, in America, it's, it's kind of hard to get me these fights. You know what I'm saying? They okay. don't get me these wins, so I can stay consistent. Right. And then once, once, you know what I'm saying, everything looked like, you know what I mean, it's panning out. Then we come back to the States. Because now these dudes can't, they can't duck and dodge me no more. Okay. Now, now they can't use my record, they can't use my record as, you know what I'm saying. Excuse not to fight you. That they don't want to fight. 
I want to talk to you about a, a gentleman that you probably know fairly well, Carson Jones, who fought over the weekend. Yeah, that's we, my guy, man. we got an exclusive yeah. interview. As soon as that nonsense happened, we rang him straight away after that in Mexico. And uh, before we go into that, did you see uh, Dan Raphael, what he had to say about the fight? He said that uh, Margaret no, was 6-1 up. I didn't, even, I didn't even see the fight. Yeah, well, Mar he said Margaret was 6-1 up, which was an absolute travesty. Yeah, but, you know, when you go into other people's backyards like that, you got to sleep them. Well, this is what you happened. Know, ain't, ain't, no, ain't no going on the, the scorecard or that. You got you to gotta make sure he can't move. He went back to the corner, Margarito, and Carson put a good beating on him. I mean, he went back to the corner, staggering back to the corner. He slumped on his stool like he was going to give up on the stool. The referee waved it off. And then the next minute, Margarito was jumping out off his stool with his hands in the air. And then they're going to the scorecards, and he's gone for an accident, a clash of heads, and he's won. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that part, but sheesh. I mean, that's. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. That's, crazy. That's, crazy. that's crazy, yeah. But what I've understood from Carson that he's gonna be back in November, back in Mexico. So we're gonna see. Oh, no doubt. So um talk to us about the difficulty of being a fighter that's got a uh, hasn't got an unbeaten record, isn't a marquee name, but is very dangerous. Talk to me about the sort of the, the sort of things that you encounter as a fighter. Well, it, it keep me, it keep me from getting most of the fights that I need, you know, to get to where I'm trying to go. Okay. You know, but you know, with, with me, you know, I always got the high hopes that something's gonna happen. You know, what I mean, which, which, oh, whoever in the boxing world, they always give me a chance. So you know, I already know it's gonna come back around. You know what I mean, so I don't really be tripping as much. I just get in the gym and do my thing, and that's and that's why we racking these wins up. Not saying that they easy fights, cause no fight is an easy fight. It's just how how you perform in that fight to make it easy. So, um, I, right now the way the way my mind is set up and my heart is set up is that whoever they put in there with me, I'm beating up. So who do you? So everything everything got to stop. Everything got to go to sleep. So who do you have? In, talk to me about your team, your management, your manager, your promoter, the people, your trainer, the people that are making Donald Boone tick today. Who are they? Um, I got a, my trainer is uh, Paul Banky. Uh, he was the uh, the bantamweight um, champ out of California. Okay. And uh, right now I got my promoter is, is Bernie Venezuela, and um, I'm, I'm working with them guys. You know, so it, it's, it's going pretty good for so far. You know what I mean? We'll see how it happens once, once the road will keep going. Okay. So, in terms of them getting you the fights, they're getting you the fights that you want, right? Or is it just you're just doing as you've told at the moment, just taking the fights so you get what you want? Well, right now, it's, it's all about getting these wins and uh, staying consistent so I, can, so I can get to my full potential. And then, you know, eventually, you know what I mean, hopefully I can fight for one of these green belts. And, um, come back to the states when you, you talk I mean? so when you talk about consistency darnell of all due respect talk about the person you were before you realized that you needed to be consistent well i've always knew it because i fight like every six months every seven months every eight months especially when i beat a person that i ain't supposed to be or if i do beat a person that was good you know i, I damn near won't fight like a year so, you know, the thing is with me is staying consistent because I don't, I don't have no consistency. I'll fight one time, then I won't fight again for six months. Then I'll fight again, then I'll fight another six months. You know what I'm saying? Most most time, when guys get, you know, fights like that, they got time to train. They got six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks to get ready. You know, so if I don't fight in six weeks, here come another short notice fight. Two weeks, a week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we talk. So I can never be fully ready. Okay, we talk about your losses. Let's let, let's talk about your wins, the big wins for you in your career, apart from the Adonis Stevenson fight. Right. Um. Well, I got the uh, uh the Willie Monroe fight. Okay. Um, which was a good one. Um, the first Adonis Stevenson fight.
The Andre Ward fight was the one that got everybody noticed to me. That's the fact that people noticed you, for sure. Yeah. Your famous statement is he was looking under the table. Remember you told me that? Yeah, under the bed for some change. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your thoughts on the two fights he had against uh, Sergey Kovalev for a second. Um, it's always been a respect thing with me and Kovalev. Even even the first even the first fight, you know, um, they they snuffed me on on that fight. But you know, I can't dwell on that. I just gotta get back in the gym, get back to the drawing board, the stuff that I should have did in that fight. You know, I come back the second time and do, you know, what I, what I should have did the first time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the second fight, I thought they stopped me too early. I mean, yeah, he caught me with a shot, but it wasn't enough where, you know what I'm saying, oh, he was done, he was done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd have came back, I'd have came back out that second round, because I'd have made it out of the round. That's that's no thing. You know what I mean? I'm my, I'm my most dangerous when I'm hurt. And yeah. it's been proven throughout my career. You know what I'm saying? I can come back and, and spark it. You know, so I, I just think that they, they never really gave me a shot to even come back. Right. Well, they they knew how dangerous you were. So as soon as this as soon as this guy gets out, stop him quickly. We don't want him. We don't want him right. coming back. Right. So, yeah. talk to me about Andre Ward's wins over Sergey Kovalev. The second one in particular. Well, the first one, the first one, I thought he lost by a point. Okay. You know, but the the referee, the ref, I mean, the judges saw it how they saw it, so you can't argue with that. But the second one, he looked impressive. You know what I'm saying? He came out. He he ain't let Sergey get his his range. He ain't let him find nothing that that get you know offset what he was doing. And he took it to him straight aggressive. You know what I mean? And I thought I thought he did great. You know, with with the second fight. What do you make about Sergey saying he wasn't hurt and you know the ref was stopped the fight early and it was low blows and what do you think? Well, K didn't look like he was fully there. I don't know. I don't know if he overtrained or whatever, but he looked like he was ready to quit in like the, the third, fourth round. Okay. I mean, that's what I see. Like he was ready to go. He was giving up. You know. You know, war pressed pressed the pedal on him, and you know, got to stop it. Okay. So you know, I mean, it, 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 was, it was low blows, but you know, what I'm saying it, even before the low blows, it looked, he wasn't he wasn't really fighting as hard as he was the first fight. So we know you've got you you've you've got relations with Kovalev, Ward, and Stevenson. Three people you know well, very well. Who's the best out of the three of them, in your opinion? Ward is the best, you know what I'm saying, uh all around. Uh, the biggest puncher out of either one, I think, is Kovalev. But, you know, Adonis, he got he got sneaky power. You know, you you won't think he, you won't think he hit as hard as he do until he hits you <laughs> because his shots, his shots is, they come awkward and weird. Yeah. Yeah, but the most the, the better of the three is, is Ward. So if Ward, do you think Ward is ducking Stevens? Do you think Stevens is ducking Ward, or just think they both just don't want to know one another? Nah, I, I mean I don't think nobody ducking nobody. It's just when, where, and when it's gonna happen. You know what I mean? It, it's it's inevitable for the fight to happen. It's just where they gonna fight at, where it's gonna happen. You know, we're gonna try to have it over here. Steven saying he gonna try to stay in connect Canada. So it's just who 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 gonna, who gonna who gonna win grounds on where they wanna fight at. Who are you picking? Should they fight? Nobody. Why? I mean, they they cool, but you know, it ain't it ain't no big thing. Like, oh, I want to see this fight. You know what I mean? It is what it is. But at the end of the day, I still want to fight both of them. <laughs> you know, I want I want to fight. I want to fight. You know, Adonis on the, for the third, and I want to fight Ward again while I'm as good as I am now. When I fought him the first time, I was green. I didn't even really know what I was doing in there. But now that I know what I'm doing, I'll fight him now. 
so 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 you want a piece of the action right right what do you think of the new boy to the light heavyweight division bad a badu jack uh he all right nothing special um he, he still gets sparked by somebody that can actually fight i mean cleverly is he you know what i'm saying he damaged goods and he didn't do nothing I mean, so of course, you know what I'm saying, he's going to look good against him. But when he start fighting the guys that can actually fight, we'll see, you know, what he can do. I mean, he good at what he do as far as Bottle Jack, you know what I mean? But I don't think, I don't think he's nothing special. Really? You don't think Bottle Jack can go and clean up? Not, not the 175. There's still, there's still other guys in there that, you know what I'm saying, he, he got to meet up with first. You still got Lidor Alvarez. You still got Better B. You, you got a bunch of guys in there, man. That that ain't he ain't even touched the top of the iceberg yet. You still got Barrera. You still, you know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's the bottom of the barrel with the Barrera. Yeah. So, 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 so the best man in the light heavyweight division yeah. is. Yeah. You said what? The best man in the light heavyweight division is. Yeah. And the light heavyweight division right now is war. Okay. Unless okay. anybody, unless anybody can deep, deep throw on him, it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? He, he's sitting at the top of that bracket. What do you make of him and his trainer I mean, talking about an, an Anthony Joshua fight? Who? What do you make of him and his his trainer saying that he could move up to heavyweight? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even get into that like that, man. If he feel he can do it, maybe he can. I don't know. But that, it's definitely gonna be a dangerous fight moving up there and fighting big old Joshua. Yeah, so he said he can be he, he wants Joshua. Yeah, he must gonna pack on a lot of pounds, man. What about him versus Tony Bellew? How would you see that fight going? That'll be a good fight. You know, they they they're around the same height. Um Yeah, they're around they're around the same height. So, you know, it'll be a good fight, man. Because Bellu, Bellu's good, but he not he not nothing special. You know what I mean? And war, War's diversity, you know what I'm saying, it might, it might give him problem. Okay. So, I want to talk about this thing where you're jumping between super middleweight and light heavyweight. Two things. First of all, punch resistance. Does, it, does punch resistance get better if you move up to light heavyweight, or does it get less when you go up to light heavyweight? Or how does that work? Please explain it to me. I, I don't know. I, I'm just strong, I guess. You know, and I carry my power in whatever weight class they they put me in. You know what I mean? I gotta I gotta be strong if I just stop the heavy a, a natural heavyweight. Yeah. So I got some power somewhere. You know what I mean? So it ain't it ain't about jumping between the classes. It's about who can take it when I crack them. <laughs> Well, you know, Darnell, I love you. I really love you, man. You're just a an old school throwback fighter, real old school. Yes, sir. I, I feel like you know what I'm saying. If you want to be the best, you got to fight everybody. You know what I'm saying. Win, lose, or draw. You know what I mean. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean. If you want something, come get it. <laughs> is uh, uh, is there anybody directly at the moment that you'd like to give it to at the moment? Everybody. Everybody. Donnell, you still there? Hello. Good, you're still there. Great. So, Donnell, what what about the potentially you coming Hello. to the Yeah, I'm here. Donnell, can you hear me? Yeah. Any, any anybody that want it, they can get it. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no no specific person I want to fight. I want to fight everybody. So let's whoever talk about can get me, whoever can get me to my goal, that's who I want. Um, let's talk about the super middleweight division at the moment. I'm going to call a couple of names out. You tell me what you think. George Groves. Who? George Groves. I spark him. Chris Eubank Jr. He can fight. I like, I like Chris Eubank. Okay. Jamie. Um, yeah, he, he's pretty all right. Okay. Jamie Cox. Okay, um, let's think. Rob Bryant. Don't know. He's uh, trained by Derek James. 
Same uh, yeah, trick. I don't, I don't know. You don't know him? Okay, let's see who else. Uh, let's think. Super middleweight. Who else is fighting this super middleweight comp tournament? Who else is fighting that super middleweight tournament? You yeah, bank? There's really nobody down there. Everybody is at going to 75. Eubank. Groves. Brandt. Who else is in that super middleweight tournament? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting people. There must be. Who else is in the Super Middleweight Tournament? Oh, yes. Callum Smith. Hello? Callum Smith. Hello? Yeah, hi. Da Darnell. Ca Callum Smith. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Darnell? I'm here. Yeah. Callum Smith as a fighter. Callum Smith. He are he all right. He can fight too. Okay. Anthony Durrell. I, I think I spark him. Andre Durrell. He he good. I like I like um Andre Durrell style. James DeGale. I like I like his style too, man. I think I can beat him too. Okay. So, Darnell Boone, quite confident and, and the guys that can fight. Um, finally, before I, I've let you go, I've got to let you, I've got, we've got to talk about the big one. Gennady Golovkin will be talking to his trainer straight after we speak to you in about 15 minutes. Um, what do you think and who do you think is going to win this fight between Golovkin and Canelo and why? I'm thinking, I'm thinking Triple G is a spark on man. Late. So, uh, actually, this, this is the first time he actually fighting a guy that's bigger than him. And not not just because it's G he, and his punching power, but, you know, in camp, you know, he do he does things that everybody haven't seen. So I'm, I'm going off of that. And, um, like, the guy, Triple G can actually box. So if they think they think he can't count a punch and they think he can't move like he want to. You know, they, everybody's sadly mistaken. Okay. That's not taking away nothing. Not taking away nothing from Canelo because Canelo is good too. But will he carry mm -hmm. his power that he got with them smaller guys up in one sixty? Okay. What about uh, the stories about Gennady Glufkin coming into camp heavier than ever? Actually, I think he probably he probably doing good up there. Okay, and what about the uh, age, thirty five? Is he on the slide? Uh, you know, it don't matter, man. It's either you got it or you don't got it, man. It's never it's never too old. It's never too young. It's it's all on what you what you bring out there and what, and how you how you gonna adapt to the situation that you got in front of you. And what do you make of Gennady? Um, making weight is he struggling to make weight up there big bear as he's gotten older well they, they, he, 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 his diet is pretty good so he's gonna make weight okay so people say he's a small middleweight is he a small middleweight in your opinion uh, he a big middleweight but he a small super middleweight right. or he a real he'll be real small for light heavy right 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 but he, he, he definitely a nice size middleweight but he's not, he not, he not that big, you know, he only fight at 160, but he's a small guy. He don't, got a, he don't have a big frame. Right, 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 right. And finally, he, you know, he's 5'10", so he carries his weight within his, in his height. Okay. And finally, before I let you go, what are your thoughts on the super fight, McGregor versus Mayweather? I thought it was stupid. Still think it was stupid, but I thought uh, McGregor mm -hmm. handled himself mm -hmm. well. But now, I mean, we all know Floyd was going to do what he do. You know what I'm saying? But for this guy to come into boxing with no experience and he actually even last, you know, you know, he got respect from me. What about the, at the end of the day, it still was a fight. And everybody said he was going to stop him, whether it was first round or 10th round, which it, it still ended up getting stopped. But that, that wasn't no because he was just getting beat up. He got tired. What did you make of the stories of oh, if if McGregor could just lend that left hand on on Mayweather? What did you think of those stories? Well, that that I mean, 
Everybody say you got power in that left hand. I mean, just in boxing, it only take one shot. But if you're only looking for that one shot, it never happen. But Floyd seemed to eat that all up and keep coming. Huh? Floyd seemed to take those punches and just keep coming. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he took shots well, but we see, we see Floyd take shots from Mosley. He took shots from Zab. You know what I mean? He took shots from Castillo. He took shots, so we know he can take a shot. You know what I mean? That that's 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 evident. That's a, it's all, it's in our faces. You know what I mean? So what do you also I mean, for him to try to just go on? Yeah, for him to just try to land a left hand. I mean, he was. He was looking for it. Okay. And finally, I just want to, like, this last point. Skip Bayless. You sure, I'm sure you know who Skip Bayless is, right? Yeah. Skip Bayless said that the referee prevented, when, when McGregor threw the left hand and, and hurt Floyd to the body, they said that, uh, Skip Bayless said that the referee stopped McGregor from doing the work to stop Floyd. What do you think of that? <laughs> We all seen what happens in the fight, man. Regardless of what everybody's going to say, man, everybody going to have their opinion of it, you know what I mean? Because they're going to go for whoever they're going to go for. But we all seen whoever. I wasn't even going to watch the fight, but I'm glad I watched it because it was kind of entertaining to me. I just really wanted to see what how McGregor was going to handle himself in that fight. He handled himself pretty well to me in my, in my eyes, you know. But we already knew what was going to happen. What do you think of him having a career in boxing and possibly taking the winner of Canelo and uh, Triple G next? I think he needs to keep his opinions to himself and just, you know what I mean, collect his, collect his money he, he made with Floyd and just go back to the UFC. And uh, Tony Bellew versus Michael Bisping. What do you think of that? Is that something you're tuning to watch? Uh, Bellew versus Bisping. Tony uh, Bellew. What's uh, t Tony Bellew? Yeah. Oh, Tony Bellew fighting who? Uh, fighting Michael. Bisping? Yeah. What do you think of that? I don't know, man. I don't know nothing really too much about Bisping. Okay. Bisping's meant to be a is MMA guy, UFC guy. Oh, uh, Tony Bellew fighting MMA guy. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> it's gonna be another situation like uh, Floyd McGregor. But they're talking about Bellew possibly going in the cage. What do you think? Huh? Tony Bellew going in the cage. What do you think of that? In what count? In the cage. Him going in the, Bellew going in the cage. Oh, you're breaking up. I said Tony Bellew going in the cage. He's fighting MMA. What do you think? Oh, you going to fight MMA? Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I don't know, man. If he can, if he can, uh, he can learn the takedown defenses and all that going on, maybe he'll be all right. <laughs> Donnell Boone, thank you so much. Do you have a message for your fans? Oh, uh, man, just just keep watching me work, man. Everything gonna be all right. You know what I mean? I ain't fell, I ain't fell off the earth. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just training and getting back right, man. I'll be back up. Donnell Boone. Thank you once again for talking to BWTM. You say what now? Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, no doubt, bro. Anytime, man. Okay, you take care, champ. Oh, you too, bro. Bye-bye. So there you have it. That's Darnell Boone. Fights between super middleweight, light heavyweight. And uh, he is trying to make waves in whatever division, whether light heavyweight or super middleweight. Join us back here in 15 minutes for the big one. Gennady Golovkin, Triple G's trainer. Abel Sanchez will be talking to me live and exclusive for the first time. We've done many interviews before, but this time it's live and exclusive. Back here. See you in 15 minutes.